Chloe Norris, CN197790. Act through on five, acting in the audience. Production, 2019 to 2020. Sweet Science of Bruising, written by Joy Wilkinson. Director is Simon Harvey, and the role is Violet Hunter. This is my reflection on development of the character background for the role of Violet Hunter in the Sweet Science of Bruising. So the character I've chosen to present is Violet Hunter, as I love playing her, and it was the part I was cast in, so I wanted to stay working on the same character. <clears throat> I think I love about, well, many things that I love about this play is it, it's all about female empowerment. And when me and Simon were talking about the play as a whole, he was saying that he thinks about the suffragettes and how much they did for women's rights and equality. And it's amazing that this play was probably about 50 years prior to that. And still women are fighting for their right for equality. And it's done in such an aggressive way. It's done in such a different way. That's why I really enjoyed it. And also she's presented for protagonists that any of us can relate to. They've all got a fight, they've all got, they're all fighting for something, they, for their, for better lives, for money, to change their circumstance, for their dreams. That's why I love the play because it's easy to relate to each of the characters. And also me and Simon are discussing the fact that within the Olympics, women have only been allowed to box within the last decade. So the women have only been in the last two boxing in the last two Olympics. So this play being written now shows that women have always been boxing and women have always been fighting and shows, shows how far we've come with lots of things, with lots of women's rights, but also how far we haven't come. And that even though these women in Victorian England were trying to fight to get what they needed to get to. Now even it being a recognised sport, women still aren't even giving the opportunity to show their worth. And so it's a great play for the time, for, for when it was written. And it's also a great play, it's very current for our modern day. So Violet Hunter is an upper class woman in Victorian England. Her dream is to become the first female doctor. And I think that's the one of the only reasons she enjoys being a woman is because if she because she's a woman, she can become the first female doctor and everyone will know who she was and everyone will know her name. Um, she says she wants to make a difference for women as a whole, but she really wants to be a doctor for herself and just so everyone knows who she is and what she's achieved. She has no desire to be a wife and seems uninterested and naive to men and her own sexuality. That's why I loved playing her as well, but because her gender doesn't really come into play. <clears throat> she isn't girly, she isn't very feminine. She just wants to get wants to be a doctor, wants to get her dream and will do anything she can to get it get it. She doesn't think about how that makes her look, she doesn't care about the consequences, she just knows what she wants and she's going to get it no matter what. Which has also been nice, it's been quite freeing not to have to even though she obviously feels the constraint of society and as a woman she's not allowed to do so many things and she's only viewed as an object of possession, like she could only be a wife and a mother. And there's even con confines within society nowadays. So to be able to play a woman that doesn't care about any of those things, she's frustrated by the things she can't do, but she doesn't, she won't let it affect her. She just has to get Oh, she's blinkered just to her dream, which I thought was really cool. So in rehearsals, we came up with a list of words to describe each character. And Simon wanted us to find um, contradictory personality traits. So Violet is selfish, but then she's also quite compassionate at points. Um, so the words I choose, chose in the end for my piece were ambitious, selfish, Flawed, arrogant, prude, judgmental, naive, petulant, capable, entitled, and brave. So I thought this, these words showed her off the best. Um, and throughout the play, she's mostly selfish and driven and doesn't, doesn't really care about how 
she affects other people because she just wants to succeed and it isn't really till the end of the play where she shows some real compassion and that's why I've enjoyed playing her so much because she has so many layers to her and she's such a contradictory person like people are anyway so she feels like a real and actually a really real character to play and it's nice that she isn't likeable because it makes her fun to play um when I was deciding to create my monologue I couldn't decide which part of the play to choose because within the play I and mean, within the scenes Violet has lots of snippets where you can see her character we can see her personality and see different sides to her so when she's with James the doctor the man who wants to marry her she is selfish and because she doesn't all she wants from him is his money nothing else she's also brave because to even ask him for those things is putting herself her life at risk and also the fact within the play they're talking about the fact that papers have been written saying that men are superior to women and it's widely known and respected and that's just is how it is so the fact that she's going to him for money shows how brave she is how driven she is and how unknowing she is to how to her own sexuality and who and what he might think of her all she cares about is being a doctor and also then with her scenes with aunt george and emily she also shows her entitledness how like and how entitled she is because she's asking for money for them from them but she's not really asking she expects it she and it also shows how unknowing she is of her privilege she's always had money to do what she wants to do and expects it she isn't grateful for it she just wants it and she wants to get it there's no two ways about it and because aunt george really blindly supports her and gives her what she wants she shows how petulant she is and how childish she is because when she doesn't get what she wants she's she acts like a child like a spoiled brat really basically and that's also really fun to play um so i wanted to to show her interactions with aunt george and her interactions with james but then i also wanted to show her boxing and her drive so i decided to choose a scene from the end of act one where she's reading her boxing book and she's trying to get psych herself up for the fight and enough has happened within the play with James and Aunt George that I thought I could hopefully show most if not all of her personality traits so I could show her being vulnerable trying to fight getting frustrated with herself how much she studies how her want to be the best and her anger with people not letting her do what she wants to do and her arrogance and yes, yeah, so I wanted to show all of those things in the short scene. So I thought that part of the play was the best way to show that. One of the things that interests me so much about Violet is her shifts of energy. Because throughout the play, her, she's so aware of her status and her class and remains mostly like demure and together. However, the parts of the play where she completely loses it and she's active and alive and you can see her, her youth in her movement. It's like she isn't in control of herself briefly and seems free from all of the confines she's put in within society from being a woman which is so fun to play from knowing you have to be one way but your emotions getting the better of you so then you have then you lose it which is, i feel like it's a very nice thing to tune into um and throughout the play it was I wanted to make sure that it seemed throughout the piece I was creating it showed that Violet had lots of arrogance and she thought herself better than most people around if not everyone around her and especially the girls um, and that people in her life seemed to be chess pieces to get what she wanted to get as opposed to people that were important to her <clears throat> I also wanted to say that I, how much I loved our rehearsals with Simon and I'm so sad they got cut so short as it was the best time I've ever had at uni as it felt like a snippet of what might be to come within my career and we also created a really supportive environment where everyone felt listened to and there was no judgement and I think we all felt that we could do our best with help and support and guidance and it was, yeah, I just loved it. Um, a few things I struggled with with our rehearsal process was pushing my choices 
making sure that every decision I was making had a clear intention. Um, and this, to try and do this, I think I had to read the play over and over to make sure I knew everything about the play and I knew everything about Violet so that the more I knew, the more pushing my choices was clearer because the more understanding I had, the, the easy, well, not the easy, it became more helpful to me if I understood everything. And I also used to sit back, I was sitting back on my lines quite a lot, which I think came from a confidence thing because I wasn't allowing myself to make choices. I'd say something, but didn't, it didn't really go anywhere or have any meaning. So to help with this, because the play is so concise and makes so much sense, I needed to make sure everything had a clear intention. So sitting back on my lines wasn't helpful to me in any way. I needed to make sure I un un like understood everything that's happening. Also, we did um, one scene with Simon, and we did that over and over again with James and Violet. And I'd got, I'd wasn't showing any light of shade and I wasn't pushing my choices and I wasn't sitting back on everything. And also my voice had become high pitch and everything, nothing really had any meaning. So when we went over it, he showed us all the integral moments and he talked about playing truth within the scene. So we upped the stakes and he told me, like I said previously about what could happen if from Violet asking this, what the repercussions could be, it could be so great that she could never work again, her reputation could be destroyed. So then the scene became more exciting and I understood the lines more because there was so much at stake. They were talking about other things and they were trying to divert from what they wanted to say because it was they had to build up so much courage to say what they wanted to say and that's why I, that's what I loved about it because once I understood about that that also helped with my life in shade because I could analyze the punctuation and I could actually drive towards something because I knew what was to come I felt how would I feel in that situation with really wanting to say something but not knowing how to so then it helps me know where to stress the lines and, and where to show parts of light and shade. It was nice and it, to be present in that moment. Um, also we did, to help with energy and to make sure I was always playing the scene as big as it needed to be. Um, the exercise I found really helpful was the three chairs. So it's where um, one chair, chair number one is told an action and then two and three mimic that action but they make it bigger and bigger. So then when we were rehearsing it made me think that I need to always be at a two or a three with my performance. And then it, that also ups the, ups the stakes that you have to be performing to a certain level for everything to seem truthful and for you to actually feel those emotions yourself. Also to help with my voice Gemma's sessions were amazing because she got us to go through our scenes and worked on traveling our voices out into the space and breathing exercises and as I said earlier my voice was when I was did Violet always went up even though I normally have a low voice just from nerves and she worked on lots of breath work and ways to keep my voice in my lower resonators and it also helped me feel more grounded when I did those exercises which also helped further my character and to understand her And also that's something I think I'm always going to struggle with, with being able to place my voice in the right way without being nervous, but doing these exercises with her and doing this piece has really made me think about that a lot more and making me practice, which I think is really helpful. <clears throat> and the main thing I want to say that I've struggled with and missed throughout this whole process, process 
was the feeling of working together as a company and making decisions as a whole to create something amazing as everyone was producing such amazing work and we were pushing ourselves to produce something to be proud of and it would have been such it would have been and it was such a wonderful company director and place to be a part of so that's why I wanted to produce something that was the best I could make it and make sure it show my, showed my understanding of the character the time period society hierarchy and most of all all sides if not most if not all sides of her character in a short space of time and as much as I still wish that we could perform this play I'm really happy we got to stay connected and work on something that I've really enjoyed and got to be creative and express myself during the scary uncertain time.